In this video, you're going to learn how to find the lateral area as well as the surface area of prisms, cylinders, cones, and pyramids. So when we talk about uh, finding the lateral area and the surface area, sometimes it's helpful to group the prisms and the cylinders together because the formulas are the same. And we're going to group the cones and the pyramids together because those formulas are the same. So when we're talking about lateral area, what we're talking about are, is the, the area of the sides. Okay, when we're talking about surface area, we're talking about the total area. So not only the sides, but the, the top and the bottom. So what I did here, just to kind of illustrate this, is I took a sheet of paper and I constructed it into a square prism. It's a square prism because of the top and the bottom, the two bases that are parallel and congruent are squares. And so what we're doing when we find the lateral area is we're taking the perimeter of this square here, okay, and when we unfold this, this is the perimeter times the height gives us the area of this rectangle. Now this rectangle, let me fold this back up again, that's giving us the lateral area, the area of the sides. To find the surface area, we just have to take that lateral area and add the two bases. So you'd find the area of whatever this shape is times two since you have a top and a bottom. So let's do that in example number one. See if you can do this on your own uh, and we can follow along uh, together here as well. So here, if we wanna find the lateral area, I'm gonna take the area of this um, I'm sorry, the perimeter of this base, which is going to be 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, that's 16. And then I'm going to multiply it by 10. So that gives us 160 centimeters squared. Now, if you want a visual on this, imagine if I was to take some scissors and, and cut it like right here and unfold it. This is what's referred to as a net. It would look like this, and you'd have 4, 4, 4, 4, with a height of 10. So you can see this is 16 times 10. That's giving you the area of the sides, the lateral area, 160 centimeters squared. All we have to do now to find the surface area is take that lateral area, okay, so LA, lateral area, 160, plus the area of the base times two, since we have a top and a bottom. Now you can see this is a square, four times four is 16. This will also be 16, so that's going to be 2 times 16. That's 32 plus 160 is 192 centimeters squared. Okay, it's like if you were covering this with like little one by one uh, square centimeters, that's how much would cover that outer surface. Okay, so that was kind of an easy one. Let's go to number two, a little bit more challenging. What kind of a shape do you think this one is? Well, this one is a triangular prism. See how the top and the bottom are triangles? And they're separated by that height, eight. So when you deal with cones and pyramids, you just have that one base. With a prism, you have these two bases that are parallel and congruent. So let's talk about the lateral area first. We wanna find the perimeter of the base. Okay, so that would be the perimeter of this triangle. Then we just have to multiply it by the height. So in this case, we only know that this side is three and this is four. How can we find this third side of the base? Well, because this is a right triangle, we can do the Pythagorean theorem. So you probably remember a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So this is 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. This is 9 plus 16, which is 25. And if we take the square root, you can see that that missing side here is going to be 5. So now the perimeter is going to be 3 plus 4 is 7 plus 5 is 12. Okay, so the perimeter is 12 times the height, which is 8. So that's going to give us a lateral area of 96 inches squared. If we want to find the surface area, now we just have to add these two bases on here. See, the area of the base times 2. And so because this is a triangle, though, we're going to have to do 1 half times 3 times 4. Notice that the height of the triangle is always perpendicular to the base, so 3 times 4 times a half, so that's going to be 12 times a half is 6, but because we have two of those triangles, we're going to double this, so 2 times 6 is 12, and if we add that to the lateral area, which is 96, we get 108 inches squared for our surface area, which is the total area. Now, another way to do these problems, especially with the prisms, if you get confused, if you get stuck, if you don't like using these formulas, you can always find the area of each face, you know, each polygon, and add them all together. But sometimes using these formulas, it's a little bit quicker, a little bit more efficient. So you might want to memorize these. And uh, what I like to do too when I'm doing this is I like to write the formula down and then right below each variable, I can substitute in what I need 
and proceed from there, just to keep everything organized. So I'll show you another, a couple examples with prisms, then we'll go on to the cones and the pyramids. Okay, number three, what kind of a shape do you think this one is? Well, it looks like a prism because we have the two parallel congruent bases, and it looks like they're hexagons because they have six sides. So this is a hexagonal prism. But the question is, is how do we find the lateral area and the surface area of this hexagonal prism? Well, let's start with the lateral area. So again, what I like to do is write down the formula first. Lateral area equals the perimeter of the base times the height. So here, notice these markings. That tells us that all the sides are congruent. This is a regular hexagon. So if we take six times the six sides, that's 36. So that's the perimeter, 36 inches times a height, which that's the height of the prism, that's four. So 36 times four is 144, and that'll be inches squared. So that's the lateral area, the areas of the sides. All we have to do now to find the surface area is add on the area of the base times two, because we have a two bases. So let's go ahead and do that. So surface area equals lateral area, 144, plus two, times the area of the base. Now, how do we find the area of a hexagon? You probably learned in an earlier lesson that the area of a regular polygon, we can use this formula, one half apothem times perimeter. Uh, if not, you can check out my video on area of regular polygons. But here, what you can see is two times a half is one, see, because two is like two over one, so these cancel. So really, all we have to do is figure out the apothem and then the perimeter. Well, we know that the perimeter is six times six, which is 36. The apothem, though, is gonna be uh, right here. Let me draw this a little bit bigger. So here's the hexagon. And you can divide this up into triangles, but the apothem is this perpendicular distance to the side. So if this is six right here, that means that each of these are gonna be three. And because I was able to make six triangles and see how this forms a circle, 360 divided by six is 60 degrees. But when I drop that altitude, that apothem, I bisected that angle. That means that this is a 30 degree angle. So it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we have to remember our special right triangles as well. So if this is three, that means that this side right here, the apothem is gonna be three times the square root of three. So that's what we have here, three squared of three times 36 is how much? 108 square root of three. So an exact answer would be for the surface area is 144 plus 108 square root of three uh, inches squared. And that's the total area. You can do this on your calculator if you want a decimal approximation. So we use a lot of formulas in this example. You know, one half apothem times the perimeter. Uh, we also use special right triangles, and we also had to use these formulas. But the key is, if you can know the general formula, then what you can do is you can always break it down further into like the sub-formulas. Okay, so less to memorize that way. Let's go over to the cylinder now. So how do we find the lateral area and the surface area of a cylinder? Oftentimes in, in math classes, they'll give you these formulas separately, but if you use what I'm showing you here, it'll make it a lot easier. So lateral area equals the perimeter of the base, okay, times the height. Now the perimeter of this circle is another way of saying the circumference of the circle. Circumference and perimeter, they're the same, right, in a circle. So the circumference we know is two pi r, okay, so that's the perimeter, and then times the height. So we know the height is 12, and we know that the radius here is four. So if we multiply that together, let's see, we get two times four is eight times 12 is 96 times pi, so it's 96 pi centimeters squared. And just to show you a visual on that, see, let's make a cylinder out of a sheet of paper here. So here we have, okay, a cylinder, right? But notice this circumference, right? That's the perimeter of the base. If I take some scissors and I cut this, this is the perimeter, that was the circle, times the height, that gives us the area of this rectangle, and that rectangle is what makes up the lateral area, the area of the sides, okay? So now all we have to do is add on these two bases to find the surface area. So we've got surface area equals 96 pi plus two, times the area of the base. But the base is a circle. What's the formula for area of a circle? Well, that's pi r squared, right? So that's gonna be two times pi times the radius squared, two times pi times four squared, which is 16. And so that comes out to 32 pi 
plus the 96 pi is how much? That's 128 pi centimeters squared. That's the total surface area. That's how much paint you would need if you wanted to paint this entire can, right? Okay, let's go over to cones and pyramids next. Okay, number five, we've got a square pyramid and we wanna find the lateral area, the area of the sides, as well as the surface area, which is like saying the total area, which would include the bottom, the base. So when we work with cones and pyramids, these are the two formulas that we're gonna use for both of them. They, you can kind of group those together, cones and pyramids. The lateral area, we use one half, the perimeter of the base times the slant height. So what exactly is the slant height? Well, see how the sides of this pyramid are made up of triangles? It's the height of one of those triangles. You don't wanna get confused. You don't wanna use what they call the lateral edge, okay? You don't want the height, meaning the distance from this vertex to the center of the base, okay? That's, you use that when you find the volume. You really want just the height of the triangle. This is your slant height. You can think of it as like L for like leaning, okay, the leaning height. So that's what we're after here. So now the lateral area, let's write our formula down. Lateral area equals one half, perimeter of the base times the slant height. The perimeter is gonna be two plus two plus two plus two, so that's gonna be eight, and the slant height is six. So if we multiply that together, a half times eight is four, four times six is 24 units squared. Okay, so that's, since I didn't uh, label the units there. Now for the surface area, we just have to take that lateral area plus the base. So the area of the base is just a square here, so two times two is four. So the surface area is gonna be 24, the lateral area, plus the base, which is four. Remember, there's just one base, not two, like in a prism. And if we add those together, we get 28 units squared for our total surface area. Now for number six, we've got a cone. A cone and a pyramid, they look very similar. The only difference is that the base here is actually a circle, right? And then the sides are really not not made up of triangles. Like here, if you wanted to just find the area of the four triangles and then add the square, you would get the total surface area. Here, it's difficult to do. Like if I was to cut this cone and unroll it, it wouldn't form like a nice polygon shape, like a triangle or something like that. So this is where the formulas are really gonna help us with the cone. So let's start with the lateral area. So lateral area is one half the perimeter of the base times the slant height. So the L is like that leaning height, that slant height, that's five. We don't want the four, that's the overall height. We use that when we find the volume. So we've got one half the perimeter of the base times the slant height, which you can see is five. But the perimeter of the base, that's a circle, which is really like the circumference. <clears throat> so we want two times pi times r, which is a circumference. Excuse me. So one half times two, those cancel, that's just one. The radius is three, and the slant height is five. So if we multiply that together, we get 15 pi units squared. That's our lateral area, the area of the sides. Now, if we wanna find the surface area, all we have to do is add on that base. Of course, the area of uh, the base here, this is the area of a circle, that's pi r squared. So we've got surface area equals lateral area, which is 15 pi, plus the area of the base, which is pi r squared, the radius is three, three squared is nine, so we get nine pi plus 15 pi is 24 pi units squared, and that's our total surface area. If you wanna learn more about lateral area, surface area of these polyhedron, as well as the volume, follow me over to the giant review that I did covering all these shapes, surface area, lateral area, volume, and I'll see you over in that video right there.